Good evening, my family. So it is still the same day, only this time we are preparing supper. But I have a very special surprise for a subscriber who specifically asked me something to do for her. And I am actually very excited to do this meal. Um, actually, I'm going to have it myself. I want to taste what it's like. And if it comes out to be something fantastic, it's going to be one of those meals going to be used in my own menus. So I will get to that in just a minute. I'd like to give you some fun facts before we get started, though. Um, authenticity. I've been telling you that this is where we are where I am heading and this is what I will be presenting to you. Now we all know the Italian dish fettuccine alfredo. Now if you were to present this to a lot of people who are on this meal planning of Mediterranean diet, you will find that basically fettuccine alfredo is off the charts. However, interesting enough I told you I was taken to the land of authentic well here's a little bit of surprise that I did not know fettuccine alfredo as we know it is not Italian at all it's actually an American dish the original fettuccine alfredo is from Italy and I will explain both to you the American version, named Italian, of fettuccine alfredo is made with heavy cream, parmesan, butter, garlic, salt, the whole nine yards. Uh, it's a very heavy creamed base to go over pasta. Now, in Italy, they don't even enjoy that. The dish is entirely too heavy too thick and way too creamy. Now, the lighter side of the original fettuccine alfredo is basically three ingredients. Fettuccine, butter, and Parmesan cheese. Much, much lighter. And the way it is actually prepared, they make homemade fettuccine pasta on their plate or platter to which they serve in an entire meal for the entire family they will put dabs of butter on the plate they will therefore add the hot fettuccine that they had made fresh out of the water of their pasta and put it on this plate on top of the butter they would then sprinkle parmesan cheese all over this and then mix it up if it was a little too thick, they would add a little bit of the pasta water to thin it up some to make it a very creamy base. Then they would add salt and pepper. Far, far less calories, density, than we have ever been known. So to say that we go into the Mediterranean side of life, do the authenticity of foods from what we know, that's kind of crazy because at this point if I had to choose which dish I would like the fettuccine alfredo from Italy is so much better to choose it's a very clean very simple whole food to when you start stepping into the American side of fettuccine alfredo way too many ingredients way too heavy and way too many calories in that dish get the picture fun facts so here we go I have talking about Italy and Italian I have a blessed person um, living on less money God bless you sweetheart I have what you've been looking for let's see if we can make this a very beautiful meal this is straight from Italy this is an authentic dish however the pasta I'm going to be using actually store-bought y'all so I am going to try this for dinner but she had asked because she has an intolerance to tomatoes to what Italians knew as their own pasta sauce she cannot handle that and asked if I could find something with butternut squash 
Well, sweetheart, I have. And the dish that we are going to prepare tonight is a sage butternut spaghetti or sage butternut pasta sauce. And so with that, we're going to hit the kitchen. Let's go. I thought I'd give you a quick update on how this sauce has been cooking all day. It is slowly rendering down, but see how beautiful the sauce is. Still too runny, y'all. Not enough to make a nice pasta sauce to can. That's why we're letting this cook and simmer all day. But, oh my goodness, this is looking absolutely beautiful. The marinara is already in the freezer and it is ready to, for, I think I got four different meals out of that, possibly five. So, I'm going to set it up and let's make a meatless, tomatoless uh, pasta sauce today. Okay, we are going to start with the star of this dish, and this is a butternut squash. Now, granted, I will not be using all of this just for me. I am the only one that's going to be eating this, so there's going to be plenty of leftovers. What I am going to do, though, is roast this. I'm going to have to roast it for the dinner. When I roast these portions, I will also freeze it for future, especially if I like this recipe. Besides that, there are many other things that I can make from this with it roasted. So I am going to cut this first in half, straight down the middle, which I have never been one to do anything straight down the middle, but I do my best. So, and right now, yes, these are basically not in season, so it wasn't exactly cheap, but it was $1.28 a pound. This fall, hopefully, will be a lot better. Now that we've got this cut in half, and I did wash this, I am going to take the seeds out of this portion, and we're going to do away and discard this. I'm just going to go over here and start pulling out all of these seeds. This is, this squash is actually fairly easy to clean because this is the only place where all the seeds are. It's right here at the bottom. Interesting vegetable indeed. And in Italy, actually, we call this butternut squash, but in Italy, they call this a butternut pumpkin. It's considered a pumpkin. I'm learning so many different unique things. It is actually rather enjoyable, inspirational, knowledgeable, and just fun. But when I learn some of these dishes that we have here, and Lord have mercy, and so I decided to go ahead and educate because people are discrediting some of the ways of how the Mediterranean eat when they really have no clue. It is us who is distorting things. That was kind of, it's kind of, I would have to say, rather insulting if you ask me. But, all right, so now at this point, I'm going to cut this in four pieces. Ah, uh, yes. Not so much of an easy thing. Actually, I'm going to cut this a little more than that because I want this one here. You can actually go in four pieces or however you like this. My oven, by the way, is set for 350 degrees. So, I am going to place these on my baking pan. I'm going to go over here. Now, just to make this authentic as I possibly can, also we're going to add about three cloves of garlic. But remember, true Italians don't eat as much garlic as you think. We are the ones who over flavor everything. So what I'm actually going to do is take my garlic, cut it in half, take out that center piece, and I'm going to roast it with our pumpkin. So to recap on how I do that, I'm actually going to, well, I could leave the casings on it or take them off. It doesn't matter. So 
I'm just going to go ahead cut this down the middle. I'm going to take out that center point in here that leaves that spiciness in our garlic. I am so glad I learned these things. Garlic can be a bit overpowering. Oh, there's a beautiful one to show you. That center line right in here, that whole thing comes right out, y'all. And that instantly, see how it just pulls right up like that? That little bloom in the center? Hmm. Amazing. And that is where the intensity of garlic comes from. You see that and see. Pull it sideways. Don't know. I am trying to get this where you can see this, y'all. That separation in this. There you go. That piece right there is what we're pulling off. And that will mild up your garlic where it's not so strong. As a matter of fact, this here would be about as good as it gets to add to this. You can add more if you want, but I am trying to stick to the authentic as much as possible. So I'm going to actually go less. The recipe actually calls for five to six pieces. Now, mind you, also this dish is from northern Italy. So I'm just going to actually put this right on there just like that. And that is the only garlic I'm going to do. Now, the only other thing that I'm going to do to this is drizzle this with olive oil. And then I am going to coat these pieces well. Sides and all. I'm just going to do a nice coating to them. Tell you what, just playing in this olive oil like this makes my hands really super soft, y'all. This will get that nice rich flavor of the roasting. Cook some of this garlic with it center and let's see that piece can go out there and now that it is it if I'm not mistaken I think let's see how close yep that's it so now we're gonna put this in the oven and we're gonna bake this at 350 degrees for about one hour when we come back we will puree this and we will start proceeding to make our sauce so I'm gonna get this in the oven as soon as I get my hands washed and we will be back in about an hour when this is roasted. Okay, it has been an hour. Our butternut squash is now out of the oven. We want it where we can take a butter knife. Now this is really hot because it just came out of the oven and I'm trying to do this to show you. A butter knife can go right through this very softly. So I am gonna let this cool down a bit because I gotta take these peelings off of this and we are going to actually puree this. Now you can do this one or two ways. I'm going to go ahead and stir our spaghetti sauce at the same time. You can actually puree this by using a regular food blender or a food processor. I am going to try my processor. I need to get a very smooth, saucy consistency. So in the meantime, I've got the pasta water starting. I need to get that to a boil and get my salt in here and get my pasta ready because I'm going to need the pasta water as well. So in the meantime, I am going to wait until this cools off some so I can try to get this pumpkin without burning myself or this butternut squash without burning myself off the skin. So I will be back with you as soon as I can get this done. Okay, so we have our butternut squash in here now this one whole thing will serve four people now again you know I'm going to be taking some of this sauce I'm actually going to be breaking this down in just a minute before I add all the ingredients and I'm going to be pulling some of this out to cool it off to stick in the freezer for other different meals all I want at this point is the roasted flavor to it and the garlic that's going to be added to it which is going in here next So those garlic pieces that we 
went and roasted at this point get squished basically and they go inside of here just for that beautiful flavoring And it was supposed to be roasted garlic. Mine went a little too long because this thing was all messed up. So, needless to say, I will be adding these bits regardless. So, it's just supposed to be. And probably, if I were you, from what I am seeing right now, just go ahead and uh, basically roast your garlic separate from the squash. It would make it a whole lot easier. So, I'm going to add these bits no matter what. I've got to wait till my pasta water comes up so um, before I can do anything else. So once this comes up, I get my pasta started, I will come back and finish making the rest of the sauce. Okay, so our water is boiling and now at this part, I'm going to add my kosher salt. This just adds that flavoring to my pasta. Once I add my salt, now I'm going to add, now for this recipe for four people, it calls for 11 ounces, which is a little over a half a pack. I, for one, am not going to be using no 11 ounces, so I'm going to make about a one person serving. I am using angel hair pasta. You are welcome to use any type of pasta you wish for this recipe. I'm just wanting a little bit of this anyway, so I'm just going to drop that in. And I am going to cook this for a couple minutes, for about two to three minutes. And at that point, I will be back. And we will do... Now, I'm partially cooking this because the rest of this will be cooked in my sauce. So, I'm just going to do this for about two to three minutes, and then I will be back. Okay, so while our pasta's cooking, back over to our sauce. At this point, I'm going to use a half of a lemon, and I'm going to add the juices to this sauce. I need to go get my juicer squeezer. I really do try to keep things on hand, y'all. Sometimes I just forget stuff. There's seed stuck in there. Okay, so now I'm just going to add this lemon into my mix. Ah, well, I said I was going to actually put pull some of this out before I did that. So I guess I'm going to have sauce to put away for this too. It's all right. Alright, so that's all I needed on that. It's just a half of a lemon. Now I'm going to need about a pinch of nutmeg. Now this evidently would make a very nice winter and fall sauce. But basically any type, any day, any whenever. Uh, you need some salt and pepper. And now the next ingredient that will go in here will be a total surprise. But it will be what brings out the creaminess into this. And there are substitute variations if you did not want to do this. So I'm adding my salt. Now I'm going to add my next ingredients. And I will be right here with you. Okay, so the next ingredients... This will be three tablespoons of Mars Capone cheese. Now, if you cannot find Mars Capone, um, there are other variations that you can add. One would be cream cheese if you wanted to. Another would be sour cream. Uh, Greek yogurt would be another option you can add to this. I happen to want to try it with the original recipe. So, but those are other variations that you can absolutely add to this in place of Mars Capone. So, I am going to add three tablespoons to this. Because I am making an entire batch and I will be freezing this. So, 
one. Yeah, this is very close to Greek yogurt or basically um, sour cream or cream cheese, I mean. It's just this one here is a bit more blander flavoring. There's actually no flavor to Mars Capone. It absorbs the flavor of whatever you add to it. And then now I'm going to be adding some Parmesan cheese to this as well. And it calls for about a cup. You just want to use about three quarters of a cup of Parmesan in this because the other of it will go for your final dish. So we're just going to add about three quarters of a cup into our mix and save the rest for the topping of our dinner. Now I'm going to put this up so I can get some room here and I'm going to drain out my pasta and I will be right back. Okay, I will not be rolling this processor, but at this point, I'm going to be adding just a little bit at a time of our pasta water to make a very smooth consistency in our sauce. Once I get this consistency, I will show you what this is supposed to look like. So we will be right back. Okay, y'all, here is the consistency that we are looking for, like a nice creamy yet runny sauce and you can actually go a little bit thinner than this if you wanted to so you just want to have a nice creamy base sauce and like I said you can go thinner so this is basically what we're looking for just a beautiful puree now, I'm going to take a lot of this right now and I'm going to pull it aside so I will be back just as soon as I get all this straightened out Okay, my friends, so now we're going to do the next step. Now, this next one, you don't necessarily have to do. This is only if you want to garnish it. I'm going to do this just for the sake of the fun, but um, I'm going to be frying up some of this sage just to make some crispy sage. So, And it's going to flavor my oil because I will be using that. Uh, hubby is not having this. This is the reason why I said it's a one-person meal. Again, forgive me as I reach over here to stir my pasta down. He is actually going to be having pork ribs. I choose not to have pork. I will not deny him of what he likes. So, again, it's a his and hers type of meal. I'm sticking the Mediterranean. If he likes this, then who am I to say he can't? Um, He's a diabetic, and I try to do what I can for him uh, the best I can. So I am using a homemade, no sugar, diabetic uh, barbecue rub on it. And I am baking his ribs. At the same time, I am making my dinner. So I'm going to turn my heat on because I absolutely forgot to do that. As we have a dilemma right now, we have some baby turkeys and cannot find non-medicated feed. Go figure. So I'm in the process of going back and forth with him as well. So please forgive me, y'all. I'm going to get my oil heated up enough to where I can fry three of these sage leaves. You're going to need fresh sage for this recipe. Uh, not just for the garnish, but it will also be used in the flavoring for this sauce. So the garnish I'm just going to do right quick, but... You're also going to need fresh sage and we're going to need some red pepper flakes just to give this sauce a bit of a kick. So far I have tried this and I'm going to absolutely tell you I cannot wait to dig into this. The flavor, the savoriness that we are using to create a pasta sauce is so amazing. The, the creaminess, the cheese, the the boldness of it's got a sweet end of the butternut squash but yet between the sage and this pepper it's going to take and tone down the sweetness to create such a very savory pasta sauce so I cannot wait to finish this and try it with you let me get this up to heat and then let me we'll go ahead and fry up our garnish leaves and then continue the rest of this sauce Okay, so not only is this going to crisp 
my sage leaves but it's also going to flavor the olive oil along with this so this I get two in one out of it I need to find my tongs so that I can flip these I don't want to burn them I just want to toast them until they're crispy Yeah, so I'm going to let these sit up just a little bit so we can get these nice and toasty, and we will go on from here. Okay, so I got my leaves crispy fried. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add, for the seasoning sake of the sauce, we're going to add this, and we're going to add just a pinch, like I said, one person of red pepper flakes. Otherwise, you just add to your taste at this point. Um, the nutmeg, the uh, sage, the peppers, you're going to add this to your choice preference of flavors. I'm just going to brush this around. And now I'm going to add just a small bit of my sauce to this. That's a little too much. <coughs> now I do want to thin this up a bit, so I am going to be adding more of my pasta water at this point to thin this out. And now I'm just going to stir this up. And I'll continue to do this until I get the right consistency because then I am going to be adding my pasta to this. Just add just a little bit. You start out with just a little. You don't want to add a whole lot at once. Uh, yes, now we're getting somewhere. This is beautiful, y'all. Now that is a beautiful, creamy sauce. So now we're just going to add our pasta to this. Way. I'm just going to be dropping all of my pasta into this dish. And now I'm going to mix this all up into our, our pasta. And that's it, y'all. Just as simple as that. And I will be back to plate this up with you. And I will be serving this for me with a very nice side salad with a simple lemon uh, olive oil vinaigrette. Just to keep it simple because I am using pasta and I have a creamy cheesy base sauce. So I'm going to balance it out with a beautiful salad but milder. So I'm going to finish this up and I will plate this up and show you what it looks like. And this is our finished product, y'all. Now I will top this with sprinkles of Parmesan cheese. The sage pieces are totally edible with this. And there was enough that I made here to make two helpings or two different meals. I have a leftover to one day this week. Very beautiful, meatless uh, pasta sauce. It is absolutely amazing. At least I found this to be very, very tasty. I will put the recipe in the description box below along with the instructions on how to make this. I hope you enjoy this recipe and I hope I did it justice. So until next time, much love to each and every one of you from Parton's Heritage Homestead.